Hey everyone, this is John from Hatch Duo. Again, I'm here to talk about the future of AI and why you should be using AI in your design process. So I am a co-founder of Hatch Duo and managing partner here at our design firm. I also am a co-founder of an AI startup called Flow AI, which is a technology suite software startup company that uses artificial intelligence to help designers revolutionize the way we do our design process. Every day, AI is getting faster and faster, better, more efficient, and more widespread. ChatGPT has increased its model performance and it's even gotten to the point where it's released a model called Operator where it can actually be an agent and do things for you. So you're not just, you know, limited to language outputs. It can actually browse the web and reserve, you know, reservations for you at a restaurant. Vizcom, one of the softwares that we love to use as well, just released a multi-view to 3D transition. They've also launched a you know real-time design application where as you're designing on one side, you're seeing the result on the other side. So just tons and tons of, of updates day to day, like I can't even keep up with this. And so really this begs the question of where does this leave design in all this? You know, how does the pace of AI developing affect the processes of design and how we like to work. So some concerns about AI and maybe why there might be a slower adoption process for some folks in the design community are, I can think of three major things. One being job displacement, right? A lot of people are worried about, you know, how this will replace their skill set, their processes and their jobs. And so they're kind of unwilling to use it because they see this as this demonized thing that is going to eliminate um, their careers, essentially. Another concern would be ethics, right? Uh, where is this data coming from? You know, is this data ethically sourced or is it kind of aggregated? That's kind of a muddy area, obviously. And, you know, we can get into that, but that's not what this video is about. But that is definitely a concern in the design community. And lastly, the atrophy of human creativity is the last concern. And actually one that even I have thought of myself as I was using the tools is a lot of these things we were trained in to do in design school that we perfected over time, such as sketching and things like that. Do those skills atrophy and, you know, does that affect how we as designers actually think, design, execute, et cetera, over time once we no longer are using these skills? However, at least for right now, until this becomes complete Skynet, I think the benefits outweigh a lot of the concerns. One of the benefits being just the exponential ability to explore with time and efficiency, right? So whereas as an industrial designer, before I'm able to maybe by hand, you know, sketch maybe like 20 concepts in a day's time, I'm able to do a hundred times that amount within the matter of uh, up an hour or so, right? using some of these tools. And so you can already see in comparison, the the amount, the sheer volume of exploration is pretty advantageous because now you're not really leaving any stone unturned, right? Secondly, the access to data and the ability to use that data to predict viable outcomes, for instance. So, you know, whether you're using research data or trend analysis to predict, you know, ideal CMFs for color material finishes for an ideal user demographic that can be done now, right? Whereas before you kind of have to use a little bit of your gut, which is still valuable by the way. And I would say, you know, still useful to, to pair with artificial intelligence tools, but now you're able to really aggregate a bunch of data and have that influence, you know, how we go about interpreting and make our design decisions, right? And then lastly, I think overall in due time, we will see that it will enhance creativity, right? I think when when CAD, when computer assisted drafting actually emerged, you know, we thought, oh no, like, you know, people aren't going to be able to hand draft and, and um, use, you know, T-squares and stuff anymore. But what we found that probably, you know, in architecture, we're able to do more complex designs and buildings and so forth. I do feel that for industrial design and for product development, we're gonna see the same thing here, right? We're gonna see the ability to do much more complex designs because now we're not relegated to spending the time within the process as long and we're more 
curating and figuring out, you know, higher, more complex problems that do need, uh, you know, human strategy and thinking to problem solve for those things. And we're gonna, we're letting the artificial intelligence kind of take care of the, let's call it the the tedious grunt work of, of getting there. What's been interesting is uh, many recent prospective clients have been coming to us because they're interested in Hatch Duo's ability to embrace and utilize AI on product development projects. So we've really been embracing it here. We've been using it in our design ideation process. We've been using it in our strategy and we've been using it to accumulate data as well. Some really cool projects you guys may want to check out on our YouTube channel. Um, we'll post some links here is Helios, MIG, and Doug. Those three are nice little case studies where we're utilizing aspects of AI software to help with our design process. And throughout all three of those, you'll see that we've used our proprietary built and developed AI software called Flow AI, which uses not only Mood AI, which is a mood board, AI mood board generator, but also we've used some concept generation as well from Flow AI. And some of the great outcomes come from us utilizing artificial intelligence, at least here at Hatchdo, is speed and efficiency, right? I think in terms of, you know, we are a small team. Um, that's no secret. We're, we're a small elite team. But because we're small, maybe, you know, a lot of times large projects would need, you know, multiple sets of designers with, you know, a good amount of headcount. I think with the ability of utilizing some of this AI software, we're able to keep our headcount pretty low and we're able to just enhance the designers we already have to exponentially make the output that much more. I also think, you know, in terms of utilizing research data that we're aggregating, we're able to input that into some of our tools and then have it output more streamlined and directed directions for our design solutions as well. So that's been something that's been advantageous. And then lastly, I think it's making our designers like slowly but surely become better at recognizing aesthetic optimized experiences, right? Meaning this has really changed the way, this is changing and it's already going to change the way designers actually work. Where before AI, we're really involved in the execution of the process itself. Whereas now with artificial intelligence that's taking care of the process, we're more involved in discerning and curating the best options. And so in that sense, I think like you really have to get a really good trained eye of not just, you know, drawing some some fun shapes and stuff and actually understanding what is actually going to make the design look good or not look good, right? And choosing between all these hundreds of options. So it's making us more creative and I would say better designers as well. So my prediction for, you know, how artificial intelligence is going to influence the profession of design is a couple things. In the near term, I think we're going to see an influx of, of those utilizing, you know, high skill sets you know, what we used to call CAD jockeys, we're going to see AI jockeys, right? And those who are very skilled in certain certain softwares, whether it's Viscom, Flow AI, Crea, whatever that may be, right? That's in the near term. I think in the long term, you're going to see more value in designers who have had heavy experience in art direction and creative direction, meaning the profession is probably going to shift a little bit in terms of being a pure execution profession where we're drawing and sketching and modeling and doing all that. And it's more curating the best results from the AI outputs. And then you're already starting to see that, especially with 3D capabilities right now. Pretty soon, I mean, in the next, you know, five, 10 years or so, you may not need to be catting up something anymore, right? Like the AI may do that for you, but you as the human are going to still have to be able to discern, is that the right direction to go? And I still think that's where people don't need to fear so much um, necessarily. It's like the, the thinking aspects of it, right? The thinking aspects of you being able to contextually discern between what is an optimal user experience, like who this is for, new technologies, and how would you package that new technology in such a way for users to adopt it? I think those aspects of being able to think and strategize are still irreplaceable. Those are still new thinking pathways, especially when you're working with new technology, right? Whereas AI relies on previous data. And so, yeah, sure. Like if you're designing a car or a shoe, of course, AI is going to take over that. So, you know, good luck to those who are purely practicing designing and drawing cars and shoes only. Really, I would say designers should focus on the thinking aspects and strategy aspects of their profession 
and building up that skill so that they can become operators of these AI tools. So designers are always asking for tips of like, how can they, you know, deal with this uh, storm of AI updates left and right day to day. I would say just get your hands dirty and experiment with the tools, get in there, you know, play with Viscom, play with Kriya, play with Flow AI, play with Mood AI, play with these tools and let's see how they would work into your specific way of working. Check out and follow folks like Hector Rodriguez. I think he's a great resource and he's always experimenting on LinkedIn. Shout out to Hector. He's really helped us as well here at Hashduo. And, you know, just go out there and, and see what other people are doing and, and see if you can experiment and um, mimic some of their processes and see if they will work for you. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts about AI and the future of design. And again, guys, like AI is not going to take over your job as long as you're conscious of staying up to date and keeping up with it. So get out there, experiment with this, have fun. And until next time, let's hatch awesome. Yeah.